All right, guys, I'm going to have a very focused podcast today. I'm going to talk about Robert Jones uh, and how PFF had one great night and all that. I'm going to show you his plays. And then I'm going to talk about the Dolphins running attack philosophy uh, and concepts and how it could be problematic. Uh, maybe not. Um, but I want this running attack, as I've said for years now, and the offensive line is key and to our success. And, you know, you'll last year people, were, oh, we were number or third or fourth or fifth or whatever it was rushing attack. Our running game was good. And in a lot of ways it was on first down to the edges and bulk rush numbers, just like bulk pass yards, they have a place, but they're not the end all be all for us. The critical downs in, in football running is obviously first down's a big one, obviously, uh, but second down, third down, between the tackles, in the red zone, these areas, the better we get at it, the easier the difficulty level for this team is going to be. And the, the harder it is for us, the more difficult it's going to be. We're going to be able to pass the football. Tua will look good without his weapons. He hasn't added his mobility. Or McDaniel with his thing. There's no OBJ. We're going to be able to pass the football. You saw A-Chan out there. We're going to threaten, put points on. We're going to be able to run to the edge on first down. But when you play the better teams and you're on the road, and when the AFC East, when the AFC with a lot of northern teams, bad weather, that are going to be successful... You've got to get this success on your offensive line. You've got to be able to control at times the A and B gap, especially on the other side of the field and in the red zone because it gets constricted. The defense is not worried about the deep ball because you only got 20, 30 yards to go. And so it gets a lot more important to take the, the direct path. Straight line is the shortest distance between two points. And when you run to the edges... Uh, that means is, is, it stretches the play out and the defense can get to you. So you've got to run inside or you're going to be notching more threes than you want. So this is going to be a play, a critical piece for us. So uh, I'm going to get into that. Robert Jones's play and how it, there's a good and a bad to it. And then obviously our philosophies. Now, uh, I did a lot of this stuff on uh, Curtis at Finn's News 1 on the Twitter. Twitter, I'm doing that thing now. It's really important. I'm kind of like a shy guy. I don't, you know, I might not seem on this thing, but I, I really don't like tension and all that. Uh, but I'm starting to enjoy it. There's a lot of cool stuff in it and some cool people. Uh, one brother, man, he's like, why don't you come to the game, man? Come down to the game. Come to the, you know, the, 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 uh, the, uh, the little party before the game. You know, come check us out. Hang out. I was like, ah, oh, yeah, I haven't been to a game in a while. I was like, hey, babe, you know, you, would you want to go to a Dolphins game? She's like, yeah, sure. So I'm going to week two against Buffalo Bills. It's pretty much written in the wind. The mother-in-law can come watch, the pets and the kids. So, guys, I've been talking to a lot of you. If you, I, I'll, I'll let you know when the tickets are bought. It's lock, stock, a barrel that I'm showing. It's going to happen pretty soon. Uh, but I would love for you guys to stay in contact with me so we can meet uh, come week two. Uh, I really, I really believe in people and, and relationships. And so I, I hope to see some of you guys there. So anyway, that's the whole deal, guys. The likes, subscribes, comments, the views, all that stuff keeps me in the biz to do this thing. Uh, I, I'm really, I learned from Dougley Do Wrong and Alf. I, I pay attention to people and you could do it in a way that's not shady and grainy. So hopefully I'm doing it that way. So guys, please keep up the likes, subscribes, the comments, the views, uh, all that stuff keeps me in a biz. So I'm going to give you a shout out and a shout out to my sponsor, Ace Per Head, because without the two of you, this show ain't going down. Ace Per Head's betting software is the premier white label platform for bookies to manage their players and grow their sportsbook operation. Click the link in the description below to get set up in minutes. Ask for the Curtis promo and get a special introductory discount. All right, guys. So I already told you, Robert Jones, I thought he did well. I was touting it on my little Twitter thing. Uh, and then the podcast following, they gave us 37.5 overall grade, 51.7 zone grade, and a 47.3 gap grade. Um, if you go through the night, it was almost balanced. We ran zone and gap, and zone could be outside zone and inside zone. I don't remember. I, I didn't. I didn't find out exactly how many, but it's mostly outside zone. Uh, I'll probably go over to tape uh, the film now and get that calculation. But we like to run gap and zone. And I want to cover that a little bit so you can understand why it's going to be a little difficult for us and why maybe things don't always work out inside 
the way we like. Now, zone is basically, if there's a guy in your zone, you take care of him. A lot of times, it's, it's if the guy's over you, you attack him and you block him. And if there's nobody over you, you go help the guy play his side unless there's a special assignment. And then you continue on doing your thing. Uh, with gap, though, it is a little bit different. It's very complicated, very finesse, but it's very effective because what it does is it says, okay, we're going to block away from our play for half of our players or a certain amount of our players, leave a guy at the end unblocked, and then pull a lot of guys and flood an area so we have the numbers. And this is great when you have fast running backs, when you got agile players, but it's very complicated. You can see here, look at all the movement. There's a lot of moving pieces and all sorts of things can, you know, can kind of get complicated. Now, it starts with the center. So if that center, he blocks down away from the play, and sometimes I could trick the guy to think that's where they're running the ball, to the right instead of the left. But if that D tackle is strong enough, he could push that center back, and then those guys that are pulling can find themselves uh, getting blocked by their own guy, or maybe he penetrates and he's there making a mess. This happened uh, last night, and I'll show you that as well. Uh, and then the guard, he gets in there and he doubles along with the tackle, sets up the tackle, and then he gets to the second level. And then the guard and tackle, both sides, they go down the line of scrimmage. Uh, the guard picks up somebody, the tackle floods around, and then he's supposed to kind of help out that guard, be a second level for the guard, and then you blow it open. The tackle on the left side, he takes his guy and drives him down, and you got a nice big hole, and the running back goes for big yards. That's the theory. It doesn't always look like this. Sometimes you pull one, whatever. It's, but this is the general theme problem with this is you need guys with multiple skill sets. Uh, it, this kind of skill set works with the zone stretch, but not so much for the inside zone. And so when you look at what we like to do, uh, we like to run wide and we like to run gap. And that's the collection of skill sets. Guys that are fast, they can move and they can, you know, pull guys all around, get people confused. They got Hill and Waddle and maybe John and they're backed off and it creates space for you. But it's the inside zone that really works on those second downs and third down and short, especially in the red zone. You could do your gap runs and you could do your zone stretch in the red zone, but it gets a lot harder. It's really that inside zone stuff, but the inside zone stuff takes power and strength. You don't need a ton, but you need something of it. You need some junk in your trunk. And this is why I like Robert Jones. Now, Robert Jones, he fits really well in some of our stuff. Last night, two first downs happened because of his blocking, but he struggled in other areas in the gap and some of the zone stretch. So here's his first play. And his job here was to get deep second level. You got short second level to guys that right at the line of scrimmage. You got middle second level. It's like a yard or two uh, beyond the line of scrimmage. And you got deep. Anything three or four yards down the line of scrimmage, that's deep second level. And it gets much harder for guys or offensive linemen, even tight ends, to get down here and track the guy down, get the right angle, and to block him. Jones whiffs hard, and that's an indication of that poor grade he got. But then you come back, it's third down and one, Eichenberg gets swum on, falls to the ground, and now Jones is dealing with a guy who got instant penetration, and it just makes a jumble of things. And I don't see how any way you could blame. There's nothing he could do. When Eichenberg's failure kind of was like a black hole to the center of this thing. But that put us in a fourth down. But this is where Jones had one of the nicest block that blocks I've seen in a long, long time. He had a guy in front of him. And he drove him. And not only did he drive him out, he turned him. And it's very hard to turn. You could drive a guy and get him out, but then to drive him and turn him. And he turned him and opened that hole for the first down. That first down was on Robert Jones. But again, it was a guy in front of him in zone. And the easier zone assignment, where you, you know, if, if you're stronger, uh, to get the guy in front of you. Now, if you're not so strong, it's not such an easy assignment. But it was the perfect assignment for his skill set, and he killed it. He gave us real physicality. So, next play, we come back, and his job uh, is to get to the second level. Now, 
You can see Eichenberg over there, the pale guy. He's driven about two yards behind the line of scrimmage. The guy in front of him blew him up. Like I said, that's a problem there. Now, Jones got there, gave him the arm to get him in control, get him out of the way, and then he got to the short second level where you could see Jackson being bent like a bow, and he sealed that D, uh, T or D-E and opened up a lane along with these guys, the tight end, and I think it's a receiver, setting up blocks, but he was the main piece to allow the running back to pick up the first down. And that was a second and one. So that was two plays within that, that worked within his skill set. But then you come back here and he's asked to get deep into the second level. Either he overshoots the angle, can't read the angle, doesn't have the speed or agility to get there. It's an ugly play, kind of like the first one. And you can see that Robert Jones is a good player, but when you ask him to get to that deep second level, there's problems. And then he comes back here and you're running gap and Jackson has a guy shoot inside. His job is to get him. Remember that? The gap where the tackle cracks down. He misses his guy, and he gets in the lane of Robert Jones pulling down the line of scrimmage, and it just becomes a mess. And I don't think you blame Jones on that. So two first downs should be accredited towards Jones. Two of these deep second-level goes, it's not within his skill set. I guess you could say that's bad, but... It's not in his skill set. And then two of these plays are not his fault because Eichenberg got destroyed and Jackson missed his block. So I totally disagree uh, with this grade. Um, I don't know what they weight things on. I like PFF. There's a lot of great stuff that they provide. But I, I, I definitely disagree on it. And the, the thing is, when you look at what we like to do, the zone stretch and the gap, uh, Jones is a good piece and a bad piece. Uh, I don't know what we're going to do here because Eichenberg, in theory, is going to get there to the second level better. I don't know if he's going to do anything when he gets there. But Jones, he's got kind of knock knees. He's got himself in better shape, but he just can't get to that deep second level. Short and maybe middle. Clearly the drive blocking, he's really, really good at. And even his pulling, if you watch, he's a pretty good puller. Unless, you know, the guy gets blown in there. He's just not agile. He and his pass, his pass blocking was the third best pass blocking on the Dolphins. So he is an asset, but the problem is he constricts the gap and a little bit the zone stretch when he's got to double and get to the second level. And I don't know when you look at all the pieces that that we have. There's just a little incongruency with this offensive line. Um. We don't. When you had Connor and Hunt inside, you had an interior anchor of power, and that helped when the zone stretch. You could open back inside. It helped in those short down situations. Well, not uh, get excited. Although not as much as maybe you'd want, um, because we didn't have great success there. But without them. Brewer, he's susceptible to power. Wins susceptible to power. Jackson's susceptible to power. Uh, Armstead's really, my man Tehran's really good using a, you know his his technique and stuff. And he can drive a little bit, but he's not an elite guy. Eichenberg's susceptible to power. Driscoll's susceptible to power. So the only guy that you really could put in as an anchor there is Jones. And he's going to play the first four or five games. Um, but he's going to struggle to that second level, and it's going to be a problem. And then beyond that, if Wynn comes back, if Brewer comes back, you could put him at right guard, and that's very good with the power aspect. But then you're going to have to call plays away from him. So he's pulling more often than not and not getting to the second level. And when teams see that and they see, oh, they're, they're, they're not letting him get to the second level, then they begin putting that in that memory, and then he kind of gets predictable. So this offensive line, uh, it will be very interesting to see if we add a piece. I think we've got to. Uh, a Harlow got injured, although it's not supposed to be serious. Um, but we, I think this offensive line is very, very concerning. I'm not going to hit the red button yet. My my belief is you reevaluate, and then you let the film take it down. I mean, my, I'm, you know, naturally I'd want Connor and Hunt back. I think it'd be very easy to say we're in trouble. Uh, but because we have these skills too, uh, we're going to put those points on. But it's looking like we're going to struggle in sort of the mismatching of skill sets and the lack of power. What does that mean? I don't know. If we get home field advantage throughout, it's not going to mean too much or as much. Um, but 
I don't think, I don't know what to do, guys. I really do think we need some extra help. I think Greer's got to go get himself some extra help, but I don't think he's going to. And I don't see from what I've seen from Eichenberg at $4 million a year, how you can keep him. It doesn't make any sense. Uh, so that's it, guys. I like Jones. I think he's an asset. He is a liability in that second level job. Uh, maybe McDaniel can scheme around that, but then that's kind of like a tell. But I really liked what he did and disagree with PFF. Uh, but let me know what you think. All right. So does Curtis saying, uh, be well, Go Fins, Curtis Hill. Start building your own online sports book today by getting signed up with acebread.com service that allow you to book action on sports from all around the world.